How's it going everyone? CJ from On The Grow here and today I'm going to be telling you about an experiment that I'm doing to test how lights can affect the growth of microgreens. So stay tuned for the results. Okay, so I was really curious to see how different types of lighting could affect microgreen growth. So what I did is I've put three different types of lights onto a single shelf. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the growth of these three different trays of radish to see how lights could affect it. All right, so let's quickly talk about how we germinated these. So all three of these went through the same exact germination process. These trays were stacked on top of each other for a period of four days with a 15 pound paver on top of it and then it went through one additional day where it was just stacked with no weight on top. And that's the current state that these are in right now. All right, so let's quickly talk about these lights. So on our top shelf right here are some lights that I've had for quite a while. These are Sun Blasters T5 high output lights and they draw 107 watts combined and 1.37 amps combined. There are only two of these lamps because they put out quite a bit of light. The shelf below it are the lights that we have been using. These are the 18 watt LED T5 replacements. Uh, these pulled a total of 54.2 watts all combined and 0.46 amps. And onto our bottom shelf, these are 300 watt LED grow lights. These are full spectrum. So you'll notice this has almost a yellow color to it, whereas these feel more like daylight. That's because both of these are daylight spectrum and these LEDs down at the bottom are the full spectrum. So the bottom shelf actually pull only 115 watts combined and 0.95 amps. So they're claiming to be 300 watts, but I think they're 300 watt replacements. They're not actually 300 watt LEDs, but they do crank out a ton of lumens. So let me find my little light measuring device and I'll show you guys how much these put out. All right, so I got my digital lux meter here and what we're gonna do now is see what these actually put out. So I'm gonna be using this tray right here as a measurement I'm going to be going at the top of the tray. I'm going to put this little white device right there. That's what reads the light. And I'm going to put that at the top of the tray. So it looks like we're at 5,900 uh, lux, about 6,000 lux at that point. If I move further in where there's going to be more light, again, I'm going to hold it towards the uh, top of this tray. We're about 8,200 lux. I would say the... And over here at the other side, yes, we're about 8,300 lux. So the, I'd say about 8,000 lux is what we're looking at for those two on the top. Onto the shelf below. Again, at the top on our side, we are at 4,400 lux. If we go to our middle, we're about 6,400 lux. We're about 2,000 below the top. And again, towards the other side, we're about 6,800. So a little bit better, but still quite low compared to the top shelf. So now we're at our bottom tray, and as you can see, we have a huge jump in lux down here. Again, we're measuring it from the top of the tray, and we're at 26,300 lux. So that's quite a huge jump over everything else above it. If we go to the middle of the tray, we're around the 31,000 mark. And at the side, we're around the 16,200. That's because the LED ends right about here. So it's not actually getting a ton of light right there in the middle. Okay, so now that we have got all of these watered, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these on the shelf. Now I gotta choose which one to give the advantage to. So our lights right now that we use are these LEDs, uh, the 18 watt LEDs, and they put out the least lux and lumens. So I believe I'm gonna put our biggest head start tray on that one just to see how it does, um, since those do have the biggest disadvantage. Now these trays, are gonna both go on the top and then on the bottom right here. I'm really excited to see how this one does because this is a tremendous amount of lumens. So what I'm theorizing what might happen is we've had lights in our space before that were too powerful for the microgreens and because they had such ample lighting, they actually stayed very, very short. So we didn't really get the tall growth that we like that makes for easy harvesting. That's one reason that we love our LEDs is because they're not too much light to where the plants stay short. They actually allow them to stretch a little bit into the light. Um, so I'm wondering if that's what's gonna happen with this tray down here is that everything's gonna stay short, but we will find out. 
So that's really it for right now. I'm gonna come out tonight, I'm gonna water this, and then I'm gonna talk to you guys every day as these continue to grow, and we'll take a peek, see what's happening, and look at these all side by side as this test continues. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so these radish have now been in the light for one full day, so let's get them pulled off the shelf and take a look at them side by side. So our bottom shelf is our yellow tray, middle shelf is our blue tray, and the top shelf is our green tray. So we're seeing a lot of the color come into these. And as you can see, this one's still a little bit ahead. This is because this one was ahead when we initially started, but everything else is catching up really, really quickly. So at first glance, I do notice quite a bit more deep purples from the side trays. I feel like the colors are slightly more vibrant. So really not too much difference. Again, this is only, they've only been in life for one day, so we're not gonna see too much from that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get uh, some water added to these. So that is it for day one. I'm gonna get this put on the shelf. Again, yellow is our bottom shelf. Yellow for yellow light. Blue is our middle shelf. And the green is our top shelf. All right, so no huge difference today. I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll see if anything looks different. All right, so we are on day seven of this Rambo Radish lighting test. So let's get these pulled off the shelf so that we can get an accurate visual representation of their growth and colors. And remember, yellow is bottom, blue is middle, gr and green is top. I second guessed myself as I was saying that. All right, so everything is looking pretty dang even. I'm not seeing anything that really um, is shouting out to me as being different. Um, looking at the cotyledon size, I mean, everything seems to be very comparable with the colors, with the cotyledon sizes. So I'm not really seeing anything that visually shouts that anything is different. So what I'm gonna do is just get some water added. And I noticed last night that this tray right here in the middle was drying out just a little bit. So we ended up adding uh, two cups of water to it. And because we added two cups of water to it, we added two cups of water to everything else. Uh, just to kind of keep this test as even as possible. Even though these two mediums on the sides are a lot wetter than this one here is in the middle. So just to quickly show you guys what I'm talking about it drying out, how you can tell is, if you look at this medium right here, you see how deep, dark that brown is compared to how light this is, and we're now starting to get those little dry flakes on the surface. That tells me that this tray is drying out a little bit. So that's how you can kind of see that. And that should be solid. All right, so I'm gonna get these put back onto the shelf, and we will just continue to check this. I think we've probably got another, I would say four days of growth total on all these, but we will see. All right, so yellow bottom, blue middle, green is top. All right, so those are back under the lights. I will come out tonight, I will do the exact same thing, make sure that these uh, are all watered very well, and then I will see you guys tomorrow for another daily update. So we are on day three of these Rambo being in the light, so let's pull it off the shelf, take a look, and see how everything is looking side by side. I gotta say, the coloration on these are looking really, really nice. And that one's looking pretty dang good as well. Let's take a peek at our last one here. And then our last tray. So let's see if we're noticing anything very different. So I'm not seeing any huge differences here. Uh, I would say this one is a hair shorter than everything else. Again, this middle one is kind of winning in height. It did have a very slight advantage at the beginning of this process though. And everything else, coloration wise, cotyledon size, um, everything seems like it's pretty darn similar. So I'm not seeing anything that really says the lights are making a huge difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some water added to all these, okay. All right, so now that is all watered, let's get these back onto the shelf and then I will come out tonight and do the same thing. So again, yellow is bottom. Blue is middle. And green is top. Okay, so that's it for today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out tonight, probably add two more cups of water and we'll continue this. Uh, I'm kind of surprised by now. I thought we'd be seeing some kind of visual um, effect from all these different lights, but it doesn't seem to be having too much of an effect. So I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll see if anything changes.
All right, so we're on day four of this Rambo Radish being in the light. So let's get these pulled off the shelf so we can compare them side by side and see how everything's looking. So this is our bottom tray. Let me get my towel out of the way. Again, it is yellow. Yep, it is our yellow tray. Blue is our middle. And green is our top. That sat down. So taking a glance, I really don't see too much difference other than I think this one's a little bit shorter than everything else, but honestly not by too much at all. Um, and all the coloration looks pretty good. I feel like the purples are a little bit deeper here. I mean, a tiny, tiny bit deeper. And we are getting some cool color patterns. Um, I think I'm just noticing more of the purple and green on this tray. So I'm barely seeing that on the other trays. I mean, there's, I guess, a little bit on this top one as well. Either way though, I mean, honestly, not too much of a difference so far in um, like a huge substantial difference, maybe a slight coloration difference, but everything is looking honestly pretty comparable. So what I'm gonna do is let's check our mediums. So that's still pretty wet. This one's drying out a hair. And this one is also drying out a hair. So I think we'll continue with our, we've been doing two cups and I will continue to do that. So everything is watered, everything's looking good. I do feel like this one is the furthest behind. So we will see, we probably got, I would say maybe one or two more days of growth tops um, because these are starting to get to the point as you can see on the sides where it's beginning to fall over. And that's usually about the point that we must start harvesting these. So I'll probably tomorrow maybe harvest, we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our yellow tray back on the bottom. Make sure we set it into the light nicely. The blue tray into our middle. And then our green tray up top. And that is it for today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out tonight, I'm gonna add two more cups of water to the bottom of all of these, and then I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we're on day five of our Rambo Radish Grow for these light tests. So let's get this pulled off the shelf and let's compare all of our growth. So yellow is our bottom, blue is our middle, and green is our top. And I'm already seeing quite a big difference between all these trays. So let's talk about, I guess, from this one, because this one seems to, our bottom shelf right here, which has the most powerful LEDs um, and the most lumens and lux output uh, compared to all the other lights, looks like it has the most uniform growth out of anything. Like you can see, comparing this one to this one, how we have some that are like a lot taller, some that are shorter, and there's a good mix of height on those. And the same thing kind of goes for this last tray here on the end. So honestly, if I was gonna choose uh, for overall appearance, I would definitely say this, uh, the, the 300 watt equivalent LED did the best for the appearance. Honestly, the, the coloration is very, very beautiful too. I love that green around the rim of those purples. Purples are very deep. The green with the purple are also very, very beautiful and striking. And I see similar coloration on the, Honestly, the coloration is similar in that regard, but I just feel like it's much richer on the other LED one. So this is still really beautiful. It's just a little too uh, scattered in height. And same for coloration on this one. I'm noticing a lot more green on this tray though, compared to the other tray, which is actually kind of surprising. So I feel like also the light has an effect on the actual coloration of the plant. So. Honestly, I'm, I'm very surprised. I'm very excited about all these results because this is what I was hoping to do by having several different types of lights is get several different types of growth. I am very happy with this over here. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and harvest these and we're gonna talk about the taste. You know what, I could probably just do a taste right now. Let's just do this just to be kind of non-biased here. So from our LED one on the end, a little bit of cocoa core on it. Mm. Okay, it's very nice, very mild, uh, spicy. It's just a very, very clean tasting produce uh, for that 300 watt equivalent. So let's try this next tray over, which is our other LED one. It's just a much weaker LED. I'm just tossing those on the floor so I can vacuum them after this.
So honestly, same thing. Honestly, a really great taste on this one as well. There's nothing that feels like it tasted much different than this tray over here. And for our T5 high output. Ooh. Tasted a green one, but I tasted purple ones on the other ones. <clears throat> Let me get a purple one here. There we go. Surprisingly a little bit spicier. Yeah, surprisingly, this uh, the T5 high outputs had a little bit more spice. I don't know if it was just the individual radish that I chose. But what it could also be, theoretically, see how small these cotyledons are on this uh, tray right here. It could be that since these are in a quote-unquote earlier stage of growth, that maybe they're a lot spicier compared to the cotyledons over here, which these are much more developed plants. So I feel like potentially because they're so much more developed, they become more mild. Um, so that could very well be the difference why this T5 high output has a bit spicier compared to these LEDs. Uh, because the T5 high output does appear to have the smallest cotyledons uh, of everything, but it does have a few big ones mixed in. Okay, honestly, I'm super happy with the taste on all of these. Uh, and it's pretty cool to see that there was a slight variation in taste as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these harvested. So let me get, uh, I'm going to save this one for last just because I think it's going to do awesome on weight. So I think it's going to be, let's do a little bit of a build up there. So I'm going to do my best to harvest this pretty quickly for y'all on camera. So what I'm going to need is a scale, a clean bowl, and a knife. I'm going to turn on my scale. I'm going to let this zero out. Bam, we are at zero grams. All right, so let's start with our T5 high output. I like to harvest my trays a little bit sideways. I want to do it where you guys can see a little bit. So what I do is I swoop this hand around, and there's a quick slicing motion through it. And if your knife is sharp, it'll be super easy to harvest these. kind of fun because I'm harvesting where I can't actually look so <laughs> just kind of praying I don't catch my finger here it's not the ideal you don't want to reach around a tray like this to harvest I mean, if you're doing this for yourself please start closer to your body I just do this because I care about you guys and I want you to see how to do it so I'm obviously harvesting a little bit high I'm going to continue at the same height for all the other trays I don't like to harvest very very low and try to maximize the product because what's going to happen is you're just going to most likely get some kind of dirt or cocoa coir into your tray or into your harvest pile, which we like to eat our product unwashed personally. Uh, so we prefer not to harvest super, super low. Also, whenever we sell this to customers, we tell them to wash it before use. We don't like to wash because we feel like it keeps the product fresh for longer uh, because there's no moist uh, product sitting in a bag. And this is looking great, honestly. All right, we're nearing the end here. Bam, so my collect, our table's clean, so I like to save anything that I can kind of get on the side right here. I'm not gonna be overly picky about it. Yeah, and actually all those are going back in the tray and that's going on top. All right, so we are at 358 grams. So honestly, that's a very healthy harvest for radish. Okay, so what I'm gonna do real quick is pull out our iPad because this is where we keep all of our harvest weights and everything. And I just wanna make sure I'm taking my notes here. So we are on our lighting test for Rambo radish. Okay, so that was our top shelf, and we had a harvest weight of 358 grams. Damn. All right, so let's get this bagged up now and out of our way. Okay, let me get this spun and set aside. So I'm gonna set this out of my way. And let's get started on our next tray. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe off my knife 
with a towel. And let's go on to our second tray. Our scale turned off, so let's make sure we turn that back on. Bam, we are back to zero. All right, let's get this harvested. Do some speed harvesting for y'all. You see how healthy these roots are? Look, whenever I just kind of pull on this, that whole cocoa core medium is mostly roots at this point. And that means we did good. We grew some good stuff. Healthy roots are happy plants. And happy plants make for healthy roots. Oh, see, I just made a big mistake here. See how I harvested too low? And see what ends up on my, my knife right there? I do not want that in my product. So I'm just gonna wipe that off. And that is the danger of harvesting too low. So radish, these cotyledons are so big that they love to get, grab onto each other, which makes it a little interesting whenever you pull it out to set it into your scale. So I have a tiny little bit, oh wow, nearly identical weights. Okay, well, we are at 359 grams. So honestly, there is very, very little difference in weight thus far. So that's good to know. Let me write that down. All right, so I'm gonna get this bagged up. I'm gonna add it to my other bag just so that I can be um, efficient and not waste more bags than I need to. All right, get the last little scragglers and same thing, anything down at the bottom that's covered in too much dirt or anything, I'm just gonna knock out. And I'm gonna set this aside. Okay, so I'm gonna get this out of the way and we are on to our very last tray here. So I'm excited to see if this one produced a higher weight. What I do know is that I love the appearance of this one more than the other trays. So at the very least, that's pretty cool. All right, let's begin harvesting these. So I can tell already gliding my knife through it that the stems are slightly firmer than the other ones, which is kind of nice. This means this is a nice, strong product. And honestly, that coloration is really quite nice. Put that back in. All right, we're at almost 100 grams, so we're looking pretty good. Try not to harvest too low, keep this even. Thing like that can go back in. And this product just feels better, so that's good to know. Looks like we might pass that weight. All right, so our scale died in the middle of harvesting this. So what I had to do is I had to run outside, uh, go get some more batteries. So what we gotta do is transfer this product into something else so that we can get our weight. So I'm gonna move this all into our colander here. Gently now. It's a lot of product. Okay, so now let me get this off of here. So what I'm gonna do now is, all right, we are zeroed back out. So let's continue. I think we are around like 330 anyway. So let's see what our weight is currently at. Not trying to lose too many scragglers here. to get these back in there neatly. Okay, so we are at 336, that was right. 
Okay, let's continue where we were. Some will say that I planned that for extra suspense. It's actually so tall that it's hard to put this product on top of it. All right, so we have officially passed the other two in weight. And one last cut. Try to get this balancing on top there. Bam, so we are at 424 grams. So we beat our other two by a pretty substantial amount. And honestly, I'm much happier with the appearance of this product anyway than I am compared to the others. So I'm seeing a huge thing or a huge confirmation that lighting does play a important part on the outcome of your produce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jot down my weight real quick, 424. It's always good to have good data recording practices at 424 grams. Let me get this guy bagged up now. And I will see you guys in just a moment. All right, so we just finished harvesting everything. Now let's quickly discuss all the weights again. So our top shelf had a total harvest weight of 358 grams. Again, this is our two T5 high output lights. Just below it are 18 watt LEDs and these had a total harvest weight of 359 grams. So both the middle shelf and the top shelf had very comparable weights and very comparable um, appearance, except for the uh, middle one had a slightly bigger cotyledons. And then our bottom shelf was our 300 watt equivalent one. That had a total harvest weight of 424 grams. So it beat it pretty substantially. Let's quickly talk about how much power each one of these lights draw and how much it actually costed to grow them and if that is actually that big of a factor. So I think the first thing we're going to talk about is the price differences. So each one of these T5 lights are about $35 a piece. So they're one of the more pricey lights. So this shelf right here costs $70 in lights and it draws 107 watts combined, which is a cost of 21 cents per day, which was a total for this grow of $1.05. Onto our middle shelf, all right, so as for the 18 watt LEDs, those are about $9 a piece. So it's about $27 for all three of these lights. Again, they draw 54.2 watts all combined, which is a total cost of 11 cents per day and a total cost for this entire grow of 55 cents. So it's about, it's 50 cents cheaper than the uh, shelf above it for the total cost uh, to grow, to have these lights on for the grow. All right, so our bottom shelf, which was the 300 watt equivalent LEDs, uh, these are actually the most expensive lights that we have right now on the shelf. These are $70 a piece and combined they draw 115 watts. So the total cost per day of those are 23 cents and the total cost for this grow over five days was $1.15, which was 60 cents higher than this and only 10 cents higher than our top shelf. So knowing the cost difference between this bottom shelf and the middle shelf, honestly, I'm totally okay with paying an extra 50 cents over the entire uh, duration of this grow to get about 80 more grams of produce. Honestly, that's a very healthy return on that. Now, the upfront cost is very, very different. So that's where like, I mean, $140 just for this single shelf versus $30 essentially for per shelf for the LEDs. That's a big investment difference for most people, um, especially if you consider trying to fill this whole shelf with these lights by themselves, that would be a nearly $1,000 rack. Uh, just from the lights itself uh, versus like if you're using these 18 watt LEDs, it's much more affordable and you're able to get uh, pretty good growth. All right, so that is it for all the results on this. So my personal preference, I love our 18 watt LEDs. They do a great job. They're able to provide really great growth and there's nothing like hugely substantially different. I mean, I do love the appearance and the weight that this bottom shelf provided from the uh, 300 watt equivalent LEDs, but the price is a huge difference, mainly the upfront cost of the LEDs. Because these would be $140 per shelf, that's honestly super pricey compared to the $30-ish per shelf for the 18 watt LEDs. And honestly, the T5 high output, since those had the exact same uh, weight and uh, appearance as the 18 watt LEDs, I wouldn't pay $70 per shelf to have these over the LEDs. I would stick with my LEDs. So that's just my personal preference, but it was really cool to see how, like as you can see here, their appearance actually varied quite a bit 
based on the different types of light and the amount of light that they got. So this is really exciting. I think this is a very cool start to start playing with some lights. We are definitely gonna continue to play with other lights in this space. Um, I'll probably do a few more tests with the, these type of lights and then I'm gonna start getting some of the mixed LEDs in here, I believe. And maybe we'll just try something crazy. We'll try some of the more like super expensive ones just because I'm curious if like cranking a ton of lumens onto our plants is gonna provide any kind of different growth. So far we saw that it actually does provide a pretty substantial difference there. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had a lot of fun doing this test and I'm really excited to see the potential of a lot of different lights and what the cost is and what kind of produce you can get. So I think that's something that's just fun to talk about and play with. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, please give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. And if you would like to as well, please click that subscribe button. We do lots of tests like this. We do lots of full walkthroughs and a lot of things just around microgreens growing in general. And if you're also interested, our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms, which I think is right here on my shirt. And if you're interested as well, our website that we've been building is www.onthegrow.net. We're gonna be using that as a point to have our merchandise, which you can see right here, our t-shirts that we've been designing ourselves. And I think they're actually honestly turning out pretty cool. We've got a l bunch of other designs and we also have like mugs and things. And we're gonna be using our website as a hub for free information about growing of microgreens. So we've just begun doing this and you'll continue to see it evolve as time goes on. So thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.